Happy New Year, everybody, and Tony here with my tribute to the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air reunion, which aired on HBO Max on November 18, 2020. This was directed by Marcus Raboy, and it starred Will Smith, Daphne Maxwell-Reed, Janet Hubert, Joseph Marcel, Jeffrey Allen Towns, a.k.a. DJ Jazzy Jeff, Karen Parsons, Alfonso Ribeiro, Tatiana Ali, and Ross Bagley as themselves. It's been over 30 years since the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air first ran on NBC in September 1990, and ended its run nearly 25 years ago in May 1996. Ever since then, we viewers have fondly remembered this show for not only being a star vehicle for rapper Will Smith, who started his rapping career during the 1980s and 1990s before becoming an established movie star during the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air's run, as well as after its run, but it was also remembered as a piece of cultural zeitgeist of the 1990s, especially when it came to the Black experience as well as Black history in America. Overlooking the laugh out loud humor found in Will's and Carlton's epic banters, whether it be through their sibling rivalry, even though they're cousins, as well as the many hijinks that get themselves into. Uncle Phil's physical comedy of throwing jazz out of the house whenever he says something totally uncalled for. Referential jokes, as well as breaking the fourth wall. The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air also tackled serious issues such as racism, racial profiling, gun violence, acknowledging and learning about your history in a profound manner, and parental abandonment. Therefore, the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air really knew how to find a balance between laugh-out-loud comedy, whether it be in slapstick or in some of the dark comedic moments, and poignant drama that poses challenging questions to us, the viewers, about what it's like growing up Black in America. Furthermore, the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and even the likes of The Cosby Show, Family Matters, and a myriad of many Black sitcoms and Black drama shows emphasize that being Black in America is not only about the colorful fashion that's so vibrant and therefore creative in its execution, let alone the music, whether it be jazz, R&B, hip hop, or soul, but it's also about acknowledging the struggle and the triumphs Black America had to undergo in order to attain civil rights, equal rights, and liberty. Even though the struggle and the strife is still there for Black America, it's still acknowledged and therefore cannot be ignored by any stretch of the imagination. Will Smith, in fact, emphasized that the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air can be described with three adjectives, revolution revolutionary, hilarious, and poignant. Revolutionary because this was not afraid to challenge us viewers of what it's like to grow up as a family, let alone what it's like to acknowledge who your family is. Keep in mind that although Will grew up with a single mother in Philadelphia, he found a family in Bel Air, specifically through his surrogate parents, Uncle Phil and Aunt Viv, as well as his surrogate siblings, Hillary, Carlton, Ashley, and eventually little Nikki. This also shows the ties between his biological mother, his aunts, as well as his surrogate family, thus emphasizing that although Will has his biological mother by his side, he continues to grow closer to the family who has taken him in in Bel Air. When it comes to the Black experience, Daphne Maxwell Reed also emphasized that being Black was not something that's monolithic, but it's also something that is ingrained in history, culture, heritage, personal identity, as well as what we can do as people. Giving her experience in starring in many Black shows, such as Frank's Place and Snoop's, Daphne Maxwell Reed therefore emphasizes just how important it is to never forget about your identity as well as your heritage. And it's Janet Hubert as the original Aunt Viv who really sold what the message of the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air was about, especially when it comes to the Black experience. And even when she calls out Will for making something very important, let alone something that is integral, such as Black history, 
into something that's light. Although Will could read the autobiography of Malcolm X several times, wear the shirts, put up the posters, and shout his slogans, he's still trivializing the entire struggle of what Black America had to undergo in order to attain equal rights and liberty. And another reason why it was so revolutionary was because it also dealt with racism and showed its ugly sides. Viewers will remember mistaken identity for how Will and Carlton erroneously got arrested, supposedly for stealing Mr. Firth's car when they were just taking it out for a ride. It took them being in the media, as well as Uncle Phil, Aunt Viv, as well as Mr. Firth, to command the police to release both Will and Carlton, for they never did anything wrong. And this is also emphasized with Will's and Carlton's relationship with each other. Given that Will grew up in a disadvantaged neighborhood in Philadelphia, and Carlton is sheltered in the main and the world of Bel Air, these two come from completely different worlds. And given how Will experienced racism as well as racial profiling, which are issues that Carlton would also have to undergo because of his race and because of his skin color, that's also something that Carlton had to acknowledge. And let's also not forget about bullets over Bel Air. Will gets shot after he tries to get some money out of an ATM. Because this moment traumatized Carlton, he even purchased a gun to be in pursuit of the gunman who gunned down Will, but Will ordered Carlton to give him the gun because he knows just how ugly that path is going to be for his cousin slash surrogate brother if he dared to seek revenge, which would have become futile. And let's also not forget about family. Sometimes familiar relationships are not always going to be based on blood. Just consult Papa's Got a Brand New Excuse to remind you of that. Because if you overlook that fish out of water element, especially when it comes to the financially poor Will who moves out of Philadelphia to live with the wealthy banks in Bel Air, you start realizing that it's not only a tale about somebody being integrated into Bel Air society, but also finding a family who he could end up calling his own, even when the relationship he still has with his mother is still intact. So The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air definitely demonstrated that this was a sitcom unlike any other. It dealt with serious topics, and it made us think about what it's like to be Black in America. What are the issues that Black America has to undergo in order to survive? And when it comes to family and identity, this also makes viewers realize that Will does have a family in Bel-Air. Although he initially starts off as a relative, he slowly becomes integrated into the Banks family line as Uncle Phil's and Aunt Viv's surrogate son, as well as Hillary's, Carlton's, Ashley's, and little Nikki's surrogate brother. There is no doubt that the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air is hilarious, but it's not only the jokes that were on set, but also some of the behind-the-scenes first takes that brought some of the actors in a very interesting light. Taking a look at Alfonso Ribeiro's and Karen Parsons' audition tapes, I do empathize with them because this was the first time they were finding themselves on this particular show. And it's also mentioning about the clothes they were wearing. I mean, Alfonso Ribeiro's tracksuit might have come up as quite embarrassing to have worn during an audition, but it's something that was quite cute to remember. Unless you forget about Karen Parsons, who was dressed akin to being a Sunday school teacher. Yes, although those audition tapes were quite embarrassing, they at least had that odd sense of charm that they had to start out somewhere. And look at them now, they have shown brilliantly. Speaking of hilarity, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air is totally abundant with it. When it comes to breaking the fourth wall, who could ever forget about Carlton panicking and crawling on the floor and running around the set? That was just a laugh out loud hilarious moment right there. And let's do forget about the slapstick antics that occurred with jazz being constantly thrown out. And here's something especially interesting that happened during the first season. There were many occasions in which Will Smith ended up mouthing his co-star's lines. Given that this was his first experience being on camera, there were several occasions in which it was really conspicuous. Even Will Smith admitted that that was quite embarrassing. And I dare not forget about the Rafael de la Ghetto scene embodied by Joseph Marcel as Jeffrey in an afro 
and sunglasses. Given Joseph Marcel's credit as a Shakespearean trained actor, he was able to use his grand gestures to make Jeffrey as Raphael de la Ghetto come to life, and he did so in a way that left me on the floor rolling with laughter. Therefore, the hilariousness that the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air had to offer not only occurred on set, but also behind the scenes, especially when it came to the cast and the crew constantly being so excited, so vivacious, and so full of life and especially when it comes to the music that they play, whether they start their scenes to get themselves fully energized, or even when they greet the audience with instruments and therefore make them just as involved as they are in the fun and the vivacity the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air had to offer. But by far, the most integral element of why the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air managed to be so strong and why this particular reunion was just as powerful was because of the poignancy. This not only left a long-lasting legacy to us, the viewers, but also the actors themselves. We cannot ever negate the importance James Avery had on the cast. He was somebody who was very well-rounded and he loved jazz. He also gave his younger actors a masterclass on not only acting, but also knowing about their history and heritage and being proud of them. Karen Parsons, Will Smith, Alfonso Ribeiro, and Tatiana Ali all remembered James Avery as somebody who enlightened them in terms of the Black experience and ensuring that they never forget about their heritage nor their history. And it was also James Avery who played a major role in Will Smith's growth as an actor. In that very iconic scene, Will Smith desperately wanted James Avery's approval. And when he initially messed up a line and got frustrated, James Avery had to rein him in and remind him that he needs to look at him, use him, and not act around him. And it was at that moment in Papa's Got a Brand New Excuse that also affirmed James Avery seeing the strength Will Smith had as an actor, especially when he gave him that hug after Will broke down and said, that's acting. It's akin to a well-done son moment from James Avery, thus solidifying that profound bond between James Avery and Will Smith, not necessarily a stage uncle and stage nephew, but stage father and stage son. This is also highlighted by the tribute video showing James Avery as Uncle Phil's finest moments. And it's also a strong reminder that James Avery not only played Uncle Phil, but he was Uncle Phil, both in terms of his skills as an actor, as well as how much he was able to see his young stars grow. And we dare not forget about the many intimate moments that he had with both Janet Hubert as Aunt Viv, as well as Daphne Maxwell Reed as Aunt Viv. And the end of the tribute is especially heart-wrenching because Uncle Phil reminds Will that he is not going to abandon Will because Will is his son. End of story. And it's that that moment that made me tear up and it made me salute James Avery for what he contributed in terms of his portrayal of Uncle Phil. And it also showed just how much Will Smith, Karen Parsons, Joseph Marcel, Jeffrey Allen Towns, Tatiana Ali, Daphne Maxwell Reed, and Alfonso Ribeiro celebrated his life because he definitely played such an integral role. Equally as poignant was Will Smith's and Janet Hubert's reconciliation. I already made a video about it, but here's the short version. If you all knew what happened during the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air's run, you'll recognize that Janet Hubert was replaced by Daphne Maxwell Reed starting in season four. And there has been a lot of media coverage about what was going on, but suffice to say, there was a feud going on between Will Smith and Janet Hubert that lasted for nearly 27 years. There were also many tribulations that Janet Hubert had to deal with before she ended up reuniting with Will Smith. There was no doubt that during Janet Hubert's tenure as Aunt Viv, she was just as much of an agent as Uncle Phil and her role had urgency. She was vibrant. 
She was strong and intelligent, and she had that charisma about her that made us, the viewers, perceive just how much she was able to be Uncle Phil's equal, if not even prove herself to be a very strong matriarch. Although Janet Hewitt's portrayal of Aunt Viv enjoyed a positive reception to us viewers, there were definitely cracks showing during the show's third season. Janet Hubert herself also got pregnant around season three, but Will Smith did not tackle the situation as well as he should have, thus making Janet Hubert stop talking to nearly everybody on set because she didn't want them to let them know what she was going through. Not only was she dealing with her pregnancy, but her extremely contentious relationship with her ex-husband, as well as her finances dwindling, especially when it was in the form of a new contract made by NBC that reduced her work hours and reduced her salary. So with Will and Janet finally reconciling and their old wounds being healed, they ended up starting afresh and having Janet Hubert arrive on the set to greet not only Will, but also her many co-stars, especially the second Aunt Viv, Daphne Maxwell Reed, who even admitted that she never knew Janet Hubert personally. So seeing both Janet Hubert and Daphne Maxwell Reed embrace was a really wonderful moment. And what I also like to emphasize is the color of blue that they wear. Now I bring the color blue up because that color denotes nobility, royalty and poise and that was what Janet Hubert and Daphne Maxwell Reed not only brought into their portrayals of Aunt Viv but also who they are as actresses. They are brilliant, beautiful, and truly intelligent thespians who managed to hone their craft and their expertise with dignity and with conscientiousness. In fact, that's also a reminder of what Tatiana Ali stated about James Avery about representing the show with dignity as well as with integrity, which all the cast members managed to bring throughout the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air's run. Equally as touching was Ross Bagley's surprise entrance, thus showing the tight familial bond that he has had during his tenure as little Nicky from seasons five to six. So with Fresh Prince of Bel-Air being revolutionary, hilarious, and poignant, one thing definitely remains, and that is just how important family is. And that's also another facet that was just as poignant. The show's end. There's the age-old saying that all good things must come to an end, and that is a clear-cut picture of what the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air underwent during its final season. When it came to the show's final episode and I done part two in season six, it was clear to see that this was not only the set that they inhabited, but it was their home. And leaving something that has become a part of their identity meant that it would be difficult for them to move on. This also has an effect on the younger stars such as Tatiana Ali and Ross Bagley. Although Ross Bagley only appeared in seasons five and six, Tatiana Ali spent her entire childhood and adolescence as Ashley Banks on The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Consider this, you begin the series as an 11 year old and end the series as a 17 year old. That's pretty much growing up on set surrounded by the people that you call family. And it also showed that despite the power plays in NBC, despite the losses that happened, not only with James Avery, but also Virginia Capers and Sherman Helmsley, just to name a few, and despite the replacement that went on from Janet Hubert being replaced by Daphne Maxwell Reed as Aunt Viv, all the actors were still family. And even after the show's end, they still maintained that familial bond. And that for me was what made this particular reunion so precious because they were able to celebrate their time on the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, not only as actors who inhabited a family, but as a family who were united in making the show as awesome as it is today. And even during the credits, we get to see Will Smith rapping the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air theme tune, as well as Alfonso Ribeiro 
doing the ever iconic Carlton dance, thus showing how important music is, especially when it came to the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. And it's also worth mentioning that when Quincy Jones casted Will Smith to portray as the protagonist of the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, he was also under Nadia Boulanger's tutelage. And for those of you who are not familiar with Nadia Boulanger, she was a very well-known French musician and conductor who was especially well known for being a music theory teacher as well as a music teacher to many great composers and musicians including Quincy Jones. So music has also played a role in uniting every single actor on the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air in a profound manner. To call this reunion a blast is a mere understatement. This was definitely one joyous ride that I managed to have, complete with laughs, smiles, tears, and so much poignancy that made me realize just how strong the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air's legacy really was. It really did its job so well in balancing humor and seriousness into one fine package, and it made me, the viewer, thoroughly entertained in both the good times and the bad times, as well as the happy times and the sad times. And Will Smith, Daphne Maxwell Reed, Janet Hubert, Joseph Marcel, DJ Jazzy Jeff, Karen Parsons, Alfonso Ribeiro, Tatiana Ali, and Ross Bagley managed to emphasize that so well. In all the trials and all the tribulations and all the laughs and all the sadness, and in all the joy and in all the pain, the actors managed to stay as strong and absolutely united as a family. And the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air reunion definitely emphasized that with heart as well as with soul. And for those of you who watched the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air reunion, what did you think of it? Was there a moment that you thought was so touching and so poignant that it made you well up with tears and it made you cherish the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air a lot more? Was there a moment that was so hilarious that left you on the floor rolling with laughter? Or is there something about this reunion that didn't really feel right for you? Comment below and let me know. Well, that ends my tribute to the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air reunion. And this also ends my final contribution to Red Ribbon Reviewers. This was definitely a fun ride and I hope to do more of this next December. So until then, I hope you all have a happy new year and I hope that your 2022 will be a much greater year and a much stronger year full of new goals and full of new ambitions. Take care everybody.